Hi guys, as part of today's lecture, we will be discussing the interfacing of a 4x3 matrix keypad with the ARM embed platform and looking at its output on a 7 segment display. I'm sure in the previous lab you looked at the 7 segment display, so now we'll be extending the 7 segment display with the 4x3 matrix keypad. So as part of today's lecture we will look at the interfacing of the 4x3 matrix keypad with the Freescale board. Now you know that if you want to change boards all you have to change is the pin assignment rest everything remains the same then we will look at the program of the 4x3 matrix keypad and interfacing it with the 7 segment display and we will look at the implementation in the next lecture. So if you look at your 4x3 matrix keypad that you have it looks very close to this where you have 4 rows and 3 columns. So you have four rows R1, R2, R3 and R4 and three columns which is C1, C2 and C3. Now you have seven wires coming out of this. The If you look at the matrix keypad such that the numbers are facing you then the first terminal to the left is your row number 1 or R1, the second one is R2, the third one is R3, fourth one is R4, the fifth one is C1, the sixth one is C2 and this is C3. So R1, R2, R3, R4, C1, C2 and C3. So from left to right you go from R1 to C3. This is very important because when you will connect these terminals when you will connect these terminals at that time you need to make sure that you connect them accordingly and you map them correctly on the board and in the program. This we will see. So again this from left hand side it starts off at R1, R2, R3, R4, C1, C2, C3. Okay, so now let's look at our Freescale Embed board. Again, in your previous lab, we used these pins and these pins for the seven segment display. As I said, we could have used any of these, any of these. For this lab, we will use seven pins from here till here for the matrix keypad I'm just calling it MKP again it's your choice but if you decide to use any other pins then make sure that you make those changes in your program okay Please be careful about that. So we will be using PTB8, PTB9, 10, 11, 2, 3, 4. Now how are we going to do those connections? Let's quickly go over that. I'm going to connect PTB8 to C3, PTB9 to C2. PTB10 to C1, PTB11 I'm connecting to R4, PTE2 I'm connecting it to 
R3, PTE3 to R2, and PTE4 to R1. So again, this is my choice. You can choose to have it differently. So now, let us look at the program for the seven segment display and the matrix keypad. Now to explain this program, I'm going to have the code on my left hand side and to explain the algorithm, I'm going to have the connection on the right hand side. So let's quickly revise the connections first. For C3, I have my PTB8. For C2, I have PTB9. For C1, I have PTB10. For R4, I have PTB11. For R3, I have PTE2. For R2, I have PTE3. And for R1, I have PTE4. Okay, now this is just quickly for your revision. So let's look at the program on the left hand side here. First, I have my hash include embed.h, which is a very important header file. Now, you must be recollecting this bus out display one. This is from your seven segment program. If you remember, it's from your seven segment lab, which is where we used the PTC6, the other side of the board. Then you also remember we used the VDD1 terminal. This is for the common anode. And now these are new declarations. Since we are using digital out for a digital output, we are using digital in for the rows and digital out for the columns. So what we are saying is that the rows will be inputs the rows will be inputs and the columns will be outputs okay so here my rows are inputs so my row 1 was PTE 4 my row 2 was PTE 3 then my row 3 was PTE 2 as I discussed here okay so my columns are my outputs I have named them as row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 column 1 column 2 call 3 now this is my function for setting my anode to be 1 this is again from the seven segment display program and now this line uh, ignore this line now I have multiple functions my first function is to set all the columns as high so if this function is called then my column 1 is 1 my column 2 is 1 my column 3 is 1 if I call this function which is set column 1 then my column 1 is 0, my column 2 is 1, my column 3 is 1. If I call on set column 2, then my column 1 is 1, my column 2 is 0, my column 3 is 1. Similarly, you can look at set column 3, which shows that my column 1 is 1, my column 2 now becomes 1 and my column 3 becomes 0. So in effect I am selecting one of the columns. So these are my three functions for that 
and then I have a function for displaying which is if I call this function called as key underscore one then I am giving my seven segment display the hex command to display one so if you remember again 0, zero x hef 9 stands for 11111001 so if it's a b c d e f g and display point dp then my b is on and my c is on rest all of them are off so i get the display 1 so similarly here when I call function key underscore 2 I'm displaying 2 3 4 so now you can figure that out and key underscore nope is basically when I'm not displaying anything now now this is a very important function which is key scan key scan basically what it does is I am going to scan to see which button is pressed whether it's 1 it's 2 it's 3, it's 4, it's 5, it's 6, it's 7, it's 8, it's 9. In this program we are just going to try and use these 9 buttons but the same logic can be applied to all the 12 buttons. So what I do first is I first set all the columns high. So let's look at it from an algorithmic perspective. So first I set all the columns high, so I make this one, I make this one, I make this one. I wait for, a, I wait for some time, so that's my wait function. After that what I do is, I call the function set column one. So I call the function set column one, means what I do is I make my C1 0, C2 1, C3 1. Then I check if row 1 is 0 that is if this one is 0 then I know for sure that 1 is pressed if not if row 2 is 0 then I know that if row 2 is 0 then I know that number 4 is pressed hence I call the function key underscore 4 if row 3 is 0 then I know that button 7 is pressed so I'm going to call the function key underscore 7 so it will display the number 7 on my 7 segment display okay that's quite straightforward after that what I do is I will then wait for 0.1 second then I will set column 2 I will call the function set column 2 what I do there is I make column 1 0 I'm sorry I make column 1 1 column 2 0 column 3 1 so now I'm scanning for these pins and these buttons again if R1 is 0 that is if row 1 is 0 then I know that this button is pressed I know that this button is pressed if row 2 is 0 then I know that this button is pressed so I will call on the function key 5 I'm sure you guys are getting the logic now if row 4 is 0 then key underscore 0 if row 1 is 0 again so now same logic I'll do for set column 3 in set column 3 what I'm doing is I am making column 1 as 1, column 2 as 1, column 3 as 0. So now I am scanning for these guys and if 3 is pressed then I will get 0 here, if 6 is pressed then I will get 0 here, if 9 is pressed I will get 0 here. So I check row 1, row 2, row 3. If row 1 is pressed then key 3 is pressed if row 2 is 0 then key 6 is pressed if row 3 is 0 then key 9 is pressed that's quite straightforward 
Now again, let's go back. This is the function key scan. Basically, it helps me scan all these rows depending on how I set my columns. As I explained in my lecture, I first set my columns, then I check my rows. Okay? That's quite straightforward. So, that said, my main function or my main program is fairly straightforward. It has an infinite loop. I first set VDD. This is for my common anode. Then I run the key scan function. So my key scan function will take care of the, the setting of the columns, the checking of the rows, and the displaying of the seven segment displays. So, and then I give a wait command. So it's fairly straightforward. And so let's revise this program again. I have my bus out for the seven segment display. My digital out VDD1 is for my common anode. Then my four rows are my inputs, which is I am going to scan them. So hence they are inputs since I am going to scan them these are my four inputs and my columns since I am going to set them since I am setting them they are my outputs and then my set VDD function is to set the common anode to be one then the set column high is to make sure that all the three columns are one set column one is to set one of the columns then these are my display functions. Then this is my key scan function where I set my column high first. All my columns are one, so nothing's happening. Then I set column one, I check. I set column two, I check. So depending on which row is zero, I will display that number on my seven segment display. And then in my main function, I set VDD. Then I call on my key scan function. And then I wait for some time. That is 0.2 milliseconds. Again, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the wait function now. So 0.1 is basically 0.1 second, which is 100 milliseconds. So in the next lecture, we will look at the actual implementation of this lab on the embed platform. Thank you.